Hi, so a few days ago, uh, there was a new vulnerability announced being exploited in the wild. Um, I think it's being exploited in the wild, but in any case, it's exploitable. Uh, and it is a remote code execution, an RCE, which is probably one of the worst types of vulnerabilities we can find in our libraries. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, how to fix this one or find this one and repair it uh, if it's in a Docker container. Um, this one is called Spring for Shell, and if that sounds familiar, it's uh, because it probably reminds you of Log for Shell, which uh, happened at the end of last year. Uh, we're also going to see this one pop up because of the older version of the software I'm seeing, um, I'm using here to do the testing. Uh, so anyway, we're going to take a look for Spring for Shell, see if we can find it in a Docker container. Uh, so let's get started. Um, to start with, I have a simple, simple Hello World app. It's going to use Spring Boot. Um, and I just use the Spring Boot starter parent. Um, and if you're familiar with it, you may notice that this uh, 2.56 is an older version, um, which is what I'm going to go ahead and build with. Uh, the build of this, just to get it, show you the build. I'm just going to do a clean install. It's running in Maven. And it takes a few seconds to build. Um, and run some tests on it. And what it really is, is it isn't all that important other than the fact that it is a spring-based application. Um, I can go ahead and I can run that. And we'll see it go ahead and start up. Um, and if I click in to see where my code is running, it's just running to the local app. You can see, hey, it's got a hello world. It's running with uh, current UTC time. Um, and this one actually has something called the actuator endpoint. So I can see I can get a health from it just by saying, you know, actuator health, just hit my URL. It's all built in. This is all part of Spring Boot. Uh, and I can see that it's running. So anyway, that's all it takes to get it to run. Let me close this out. Let me scoot this down just a little bit too, make it easier to read. Um, okay, so that's how you build it. Um, I also have a simple Docker file here with it. Um, and this Docker file just takes a fairly recent Alpine OpenJDK image, uh, goes ahead and throws down Spring user and group. Um, pulls whatever jar is created in the uh, target, which is where the POM is going to put it. Um, and it's going to go ahead and run that. Uh, it also is going to say it's on running on port 8080. And uh, it puts a health check in here that really all it does is every 30 seconds curl that actuator health to see if it has status up um, so that it knows that the Docker image is running. It's all just a good idea uh, for the Docker file. Uh, to make sure it's like that. So to build this, we're just going to do a Docker build. I'm going to give it my Docker Hub username, and then I'm going to call the image Spring Boot Hello World. Um, and it's right here in this directory. I can go ahead and build it. There we go. So I went ahead and built it. Um, sure we could probably do a better job of it. I probably picked up a lot of garbage in this as well. Um, but anyway, it, it, it's in there and we can see it. Um, I have this image now. So what I want to do is start to scan it. So the first thing I'm going to do is scan it with a tool called Trivi. And Trivi is by a company called Aqua Security. They write a lot of open source security tools. Plenty of great documentation on it. It's all open source. Um, and Let's go ahead right to it. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and make this big so you can see the whole thing here. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and install Trivi. The instructions are on the website. Um, unfortunately, it's one of those installers where you download a shell file and then type it to sudo. Not the greatest. You should definitely be careful before you ever do anything like this. But it looks like it works, and I've checked it, and this one is safe. I know this is a good one, but you shouldn't trust me on that. 
So the first thing trivia can actually trivia can actually do is I can actually trivia a config file um, or a Docker file rather using trivia config uh, that's installed and installed in the user local bin. Um, but I can go ahead and I can just have it do a scan of it and it'll take a look to see, do a bunch of tests against the Docker files to see if it's missing any best practices, which is kind of nice, right? We have other tools that also do that. Um, but, you know, as long as you're getting Trivi, you can go ahead and use it for that as well. Um, the next step is really what I want to do is to Trivi the image, which is I want to do a doc, uh, container uh, vulnerability scan. So I want to look at the image I created, and I just want to see does this image have any known vulnerabilities? And there's lots of different ways to do it, lots of different ways to get some output, uh, but I'm going to stick with a real simple trivia image and then the image name, which again, my Docker Hub username, Spring Boot Hello World. First thing it's going to do is it's going to download the updated database of vulnerabilities. It's a vulnerability scanner, which means it changes on a regular basis. And so you need an updated list of vulnerabilities to make it any value. Uh, all of those tools are going to be like this. It needs updated, updated data. Um, and you can see it spits out a, an ASCII art here table. Um, I'm going to scroll up to the top. You can see kind of what we're dealing with here. It downloads the database. It won't have to do that every time. It caches it. If we run it again, it'll go much quicker. Uh, you can see that scanning this, it detects that it's based on Alpine 3.14.0. Um, and at the Alpine level, it noticed 31 vulnerabilities, most of them highs, a couple criticals, a couple mediums, right? Um, and we could look at fixing that. I'm not going to play with those today, but they are serious, right? We can see what the library is, what the vulnerability is, to see what it's based on. This happens to be based on BusyBox, right? Get some more information about it, some links to some uh, URLs and stuff. Um, but all different libraries here that's found problems. Uh, but then it's going to get down to the Java piece, right? Because we installed a Java app on there. And here's what it found. It found uh, some mediums, some highs on some older stuff there. Um, and the big ones we wanted to look at is this one here, two, uh, CV 2022-22965, which is the uh, RCE via data binding, which is also known as Spring for Shell. Right, we see that shows up in two different libraries, both of them Spring libraries, or three different libraries, I guess, all of them Spring libraries. Not at all surprising um, that they're all related uh, because they're all using the same versions, right? And we see that it is using Spring Boot 2.5.6. We could go to 2.5.12, or we could go to 2.6.6 to fix this, right? So that's one tool that we can look at. Um, like I said, there's lots of different ways to do this output. This happens to be a convenient way to look at it uh, and go through it as long as the list isn't too long. It's actually pretty good to read as long as you've got a big enough screen. All right. So that's Trivi. The, uh, we'll go back to fixing it and show what it finds. Uh, the other tool I want to look at is called uh, Anchor Gripe. And Gripe, Anchor is another company that puts out a lot of open source software. Uh, both Aqua Security and Anchor have. Uh, for pay products that roll these up and use these internally. Um, so Gripe also has some very simple installation instructions. Um, go ahead and copy it out. Gripe also happens to be one where you grab the uh, bash script, type it to sudo. Again, not a great idea unless you've already checked it. Go ahead and run it. Okay, went ahead and installed it, and it installed it in user local bin gripe. All right, so with that, I can gripe. I just give it the name. Um, let me get the Gautamer Spring Boot Hello World. And it's going to go ahead and download the vulnerability database as well. Again, it's not going to do this every time, only when it needs to update it. It detects it needs to update it because it has to have updated data. Grab the copy of the image. Look through it, and then it's going to spit out the results.
And again, there's a lot of different ways to view this, a lot of different output formats it has. Uh, we can see a lot of the same types of things, busy box problems, uh, the Jackson data bind that we had seen before. Um, but one thing that's weird here is that this one does not pick up the uh, CVE 2022-22965, right? Just a quick scan shows it's not finding that. Oddly enough, it is finding log4j, right? Which we didn't expect to see um, because it didn't show up in the trivi scan. So good point here is that, you know, not all vulnerability databases and scanners are created equal. Um, some are gonna find some stuff, some are gonna find other things. Um, it's not a bad idea to use multiple scanners uh, and scan at different, different levels of your, your builds to find out what's there. Uh, one thing I can do here actually, if I grab the right code, maybe I'll have to type it wrong, um, because this one does happen to show us that there's log4j, and if I scroll back up, I don't see that anywhere in here in the Java uh, results from Trivi. If I can go ahead, I can run this command. This is a Maven command, uh, dependency tree, uh, which is gonna scan through my document. It's gonna download a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, just because it's Maven, it needs to download a lot. Uh, and it spits out an ASCII art tree of all the dependencies of that hello world code I wrote. Um, you see it's under Spring Boot. And if you can actually follow down through here, you actually can see some of the log for J. It tells you which, which uh, pieces are transient dependencies of which other pieces. Um, and this one says, you know, it has log for J 2.14.1, which is vulnerable to log for shell. Uh, 2.17 is up to date. Um, so yeah, confirmed, it's, it's there, right? We, we know we're using the Spring Boot, uh, uh, the older version of Spring Boot, right? 2.5.6, which has this, the Spring for Shell. And now we see we're using Log4j, a couple different Log4j libraries, 2.14.1, which is log for shell So um, again, two different scanners, two different results worth using that to clean it up. Let's go ahead and shrink this back down. I'm gonna skip back over here. In this case, Trivi, Trivi already told me what it uh, what the fix was, is that I could upgrade to 2.5.12 or 2.6.6, uh, which is the choice I'm going to make. I'm gonna update it to 2.6.6. I'm gonna do Maven clean install. Pilot, run the unit tests. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the Docker build again. Just overwrite the old one. Notice it went really quick because of course it has most of the layers already cached. We need to rebuild them. Um, so all rebuilt here. And now let's go ahead back to the big one. Um, I'll go back to Trivi on the image. This time when I run it, it's not going to download the vulnerability database because it has the updated copy. We still see all the same uh, problems on Alpine, which makes sense because we didn't upgrade Alpine. We use the same base image. Uh, but this time, Trivi picks up no uh, problems in the jar. Uh, of course, we're using this latest one only a couple days after it came out, so it makes sense that they've that the spring uh, pe spring people have uh, cleaned everything up that they absolutely can. And then if I go into Gripe, rerun it with Gripe, goes out to load the new image, but it did not update the database as you see. And there we go. And if we scroll down, no log for J in the middle there. So. Nice and easy to fix. Oh, last thing I can do here, I guess, is I can do a Maven dependency tree on our latest build. It still has to download a bunch of things to change some of the dependencies. Um, and if I scroll through this time and notice that it's using log4j 217.2 and Spring Boot 
2.6.6. So it's not vulnerable to spring for shell nor to log for shell. Thank you very much. Hope this was helpful.